Welcome to the Engineerable channel, guys. In this video, I'm going to take a look at what's inside the Gel Blaster Starfire Starfire unit, the thing that makes the gel balls glow. So it snaps right off the blaster like this, so you can actually use the Starfire unit on a non-Starfire blaster, like another regular Surge or a Surge XL. And then you can also just use a regular hopper feed neck on here. It's intended to use two AAA batteries, and it has a power switch which I find annoying because every time I'm done playing with it, I have to remove the batteries because otherwise the power switch is too easy to trigger and it'll turn on and just run down the batteries. So keep an eye out for my other video where I do a modification where I run the UV LEDs directly off the Starfire battery so you don't need to have these extra batteries. And it's going to be hooked into the power switch in the Starfire, so if the Starfire is off, the LEDs are off. Okay, so the first thing to do to take this apart is to remove this green cover on top. And then you're going to take a number one or number zero Phillips screwdriver and remove these two screws. The battery cover comes off as a single piece. Here's one half and here's the other half with the LEDs in it. Let me pull this apart a little bit further. And this is the UV LED module. There's space for six LEDs, but they only chose to use four LEDs. Four LEDs seems plenty sufficient to make the gel balls glow. So on this PCB, it looks like we actually have a voltage regulator circuitry. So maybe it can be powered directly off of the 7.4 volts in the blaster versus the three volts here. Looks like that is, in fact, a voltage regulation circuit because here's the power supply voltage. And as I drop that, you'll notice that it tries to stabilize the output voltage to the LEDs and probably the current also. There it actually jumps up when it gets to two. Then I keep going down. It's still three volts in the output. until which point it just drops out. So it only takes about one volt on the input to get three volts on the output. The LEDs are brightest at about 1.5 volts on the input. And here they start to, they start to dim when you reach two volts. And they brighten up a little bit again when you reach three. Something interesting is that if we measure the voltage at these contacts that are at the front of the blaster, when you turn the switch on, it goes to 5 volts. And it looks like it might be regulated because firing the blaster doesn't affect the voltage. If that voltage were not regulated, we would see a voltage drop here when we're firing the blaster. So this 5 volts would be a great source for powering LEDs. When the power is left on, the blaster goes to sleep because it hasn't been used these contacts in the front also power down. So let's see if I can wake them up. There you go. Now the contacts are at 5 volts again. So now I'm going to put the electronics assembly back into the Starfire unit housing. So I put this green cover on first. There's two pins that fit into these two holes. It goes right here. Slide the other side of the cover back on. You want to make sure that your contacts are straight so that they seat properly in there. If you care about ever being able to use batteries again, put the battery cover back on. Just stretch this out a little bit. Okay. Snap the cover back over the opening. And then put these screws back in and tighten them up. That's it for the Starfire module, so now let's hook it up to the blaster. In this video, I'm going to show you how to hardwire the Starfire unit on the Gel Blaster Starfire or the Surge so that the UV LEDs in the Tracer unit can run off the internal batteries. As you can see, the Starfire unit is wired into the blaster and there are no batteries in here. And you won't be wasting any more of these AAA batteries 